I've quickly found out that actors are very tiny. Yes. Because I am a six foot seven guy, and actors, <laughs> if they're like, if they look really big on screen, that means they're maybe five eight. Big heads, small like, time. Big <laughs> heads, small bodies. So I was like, okay, maybe acting isn't gonna work out. And then I always loved radio. We all know the countless reasons to love dogs. Loyalty, support, companionship, a best friend when you're in need. But I think one of the most underrated reasons is the way they connect us with other people. So today we're in Williamsburg to connect with writer, comedian, podcaster, and overall great guy, Ben Kissel. Ben is a fellow dog dad. He's the host of the wildly popular last podcast on the left. And today we're gonna sit down and chat about comedy, life, dogs, and just about everything in between. Join us on our very first episode of Dog People. Good to meet you. So thanks I'm, so much I'm for not used me. to being the small one in these situations. Absolutely, I, I like this. I feel I like this. I kind of feel normal too. This is perfect. And this is the, the this, real celebrity day, this right? Puffin. Puffin. Yeah. Well, I got a table around back. Let's go hang out and learn some more about a good dog person. How did Puffin come into your life? So I was on Pet Finder, uh, as all good drunk Williamsburg 38 year olds are. Friday night, I assume. Friday night, I used to get drunk and like, you know, look online for God knows what. And then I got to an age where I'm like, I need to find a dog. So I'm just sitting there, scrolling through Pet Finder, and I see a picture of this dog. And it is the cutest dog of all time. He was marketed as an 11 month old Pomeranian. And I was driving down to pick him up. I rented a car, driving down to pick him up. And they called me and it's like, well, actually he's a seven year old uh, German Spitz. And he has a heart murmur and a hernia and all this stuff. And I was like, I do not care. I want this dog. Oh, and uh, so now he's my grumpy old man. For you know, anyone hanging out watching with us that isn't familiar with last podcast on the left, it's a massive hit. Yeah. Uh, when did it start? So last podcast on the left started in 2009. And this was like before podcasts even really existed. Was, about the, uh, was there even a uh, network or distribution for podcasts? No, there really wasn't anything. It was just iTunes. I remember when we had one listener to 20 listeners to 100 listeners. I remember when we got our th thousandth listener. And now, of course, we do about 2.5 million listeners a week. We're DIY. Without the audience, we wouldn't be here. And I feel like that's why we have such a nice connection with our fan base. I love that about radio. You truly get to know the person without any physical artifice. Yeah. You don't see them, you don't know if they're attractive, you don't know if they're ugly, you don't know if they're big or small, whatever it might be, in a wheelchair. You can really connect with an audience and they can connect with you in a super pure way, which is just your thoughts and, you know, obviously your voice. The last podcast on the left is obviously your, your flagship. You yes. have a, you have some other podcasts though. Don't. Abe Lincoln's Top Hat, is that still active? Are you still yep, doing that? Yeah, that's still active every single week. It's one of the most successful political podcasts out there. My okay. degree is political science. I love politics. You actually ran for office. Yeah, I ran for Brooklyn Borough President. Okay. Got 6,000 votes. And that is what the documentary is all about. It's called Hail Yourself America. And yeah, it's basically just kind of teaching people how to run for office. That was sort of the intent when I ran for office. I ran with the Reform Party, and I just wanted to show people how to do it because there are a lot of hoops and hurdles you gotta get yeah. over. And so throughout the documentary, we're just kind of following my journey and then hopefully kind of inspiring people to run for office themselves and hopefully do a lot better than I did. I also do a wrestling podcast now. If you want a great example of where we are as a country, Abraham Lincoln is in the NCAA Wrestling Hall of Fame, and Donald Trump is in the WWE Hall of Fame. So there you go, if you I, want to now, know. Like, I feel like I need to deep dive why Abe Lincoln is in the NCAA. He was a beast, apparently he was he undefeated. Was a, what? Yeah, I swear That's to- That's a true story. Yes, I swear to God. Abe Lincoln was a collegiate wrestler. Yes, he was a beast. You're a coffee drinker. What got you into coffee? Was there a person? Hangovers. Hangovers? Yeah, you grew up in Wisconsin. You got beer is the- beer After is 21. The, <laughs> after 20, of course, after 21. It was really college. It was college where I was like, coffee is my lifeblood. So I would walk to uh, the coffee shop in my local, uh, at, at, I went to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. There's a coffee shop there. My friend Kelly worked at it. Without coffee, I don't think I would have graduated. Last podcast on the left, we actually started it, just Marcus and I, it was just gonna be about horror movies, and then Henry Zabrowski heard about it, and then he was like, I'm coming on the show, and then he just never left. We gave them something that was never in existence before, a true horror comedy podcast. The most important question for the for this okay. last podcast on the left fans, top three serial killers of all time. 
Oh, this is kind of funny because I don't even like to say top three. I would say like the bottom three serial killers. The, the, the bottom three the of bottom the top, yeah. The killers. most interesting are the ones that kind of spurred your interest the most. H.H. H. Holmes, absolutely fascinating. He was building this massive murder hotel that went nowhere. Uh, it was just out of this world. We have someone like a Jeffrey Dahmer going back to Wisconsin. And it's all Midwestern. Me, I'm not saying that. I'm oh, no, the Midwest is Seems full. like they've had a lot. A lot of uh, pent up anger in the Midwest because you're not allowed to express it. I'll go with Andre Chikatilo, uh, who was a Russian serial killer, who was okay. a former school teacher, who was really able to thrive because of the Soviet system, because they never wanted to admit that like one of their teachers was actually a horrible person. The most important thing that we always talk about when it comes to talking about serial killers is, first of all, we don't glorify them at all. We try to defang them. I don't like the way that the media tries to make them seem better than they are, or like masterminds. So we just try to sort of take the air out of them and demystify them. Uh, and so I think when we do that, it makes them less scary. Yeah. And I think it helps people sort of confront the monster in a more productive way. The thing that I realized was just make people want to be in your presence. Because I used to think about this with stand-up all the time. It's like, how are you going to make an entire room laugh with like a joke? It's not really about the joke. It's more about your presence and make people want to be around you. And uh, that's the number one trick when it comes to entertainment and podcasts specifically. It's like Puffin. Just like Puffin. Man. That was Ben Kissel, host of Last Podcast on the Left. I'm Jordan from Grounds and Hounds Coffee, and I hope you join us for our next conversation with another great dog person.